Hey, Winnie, Paul here. Um, I was just texting you about the tail end on your bike, and I thought I'd shoot you this video just so we can fully understand what we're talking about when I say that. While the LED will absolutely not lead to the incandescent bulb having melted your tail light lens, uh, the problem is now that the actual incandescent light bulb has melted the lens already, and on the inside, uh, you can clearly see where the melting has done some damage. This part here is actually uh, kind of crusty and um, regrettably when the uh, LED light goes in to take the place of the incandescent bulb, uh, it actually presses right up against that melted part and won't actually physically fit. Um, the lens itself is not doing as well as it possibly could. It's uh, kind of coming apart here. This could easily be snapped back into position, some crazy glue added and, uh, and fixed. But, um, but this melting is very evident, very clear. You can see where rainwater can very easily make its way in there. Uh, there is an exit actually drilled into the taillight lens. So if water did collect in here, not only would it come out the actual holes and cracks in the lens, but the actual light itself does have a way for water to, I guess it goes this way, so water would exit out that way. Um, but on the actual light bulb itself, I'm not sure you can see this because uh, my camera work isn't very good, but you can see there's like melted plastic on the light bulb itself. Um, I'm sure if you can kind of see it, it kind of looks like a gooey, this is hard and dry, but, um, but there's the old light bulb or the tail light lens on the, oh, that's actually, Pretty nice focus right there you can see that really clearly so there that is um, and then here on the inside you can see how melted that is um, I'm gonna say it's probably time to replace this and if you don't want to replace this because it's nearly impossible to find there's no brand name on it anywhere uh, not to mention this is not DOT certified which technically means this is illegal to use uh, on public streets um, ask me about that later um, we could just fill in this hole with glue and uh, I will dremel away the um, melted part here so that the LED light can fit in there together and um, you can ride away all lit up as they say. Um, that's all I have. There we are. Bugger. Okay, Winnie, this is the second step of, um, of your bike and testing as to why your bike does that thing that it does that we talked about on the phone. Um, I'm going to try and speed through this if I can. Uh, pause the video if I lose you any place. Okay, um, this little uh, red alligator clip is attached to the positive lead on your battery, which is uh, under the seat of your bike, as you well know. I'm going to put that on. And then the negative, which is uh, just out of the shot here, is right there. And these two leads, let me get this on there. These two alligator clips lead to this device here. This is called a battery voltage load tester. And I'm gonna check the battery load. Yeah, I'm gonna check the battery load on this to see what kind of cold crank amps this battery makes for your bike. Cold crank amps is, um, is in the battery world a measurement of how much power the battery has to make when the bike is being cranked cold and from a cold temperature. Presumably this is when the engine would work the hardest, sorry, when the battery would work the hardest to turn the engine over at cold cranking amperage. So here we are, your battery comes in. You said that you had it on a tender over the winter months, 13.9, that is a very good number. So AGM battery, this means that it's a sealed battery. That's what's in there. Uh, cold crank test, that's what we want to test for. The limit is at 145. Now off camera, I already checked this and it said that the threshold was about 140. So I put the bar just a little bit above that at 145 and let's give this a test. And when I press this button in this skinny little electronic device here, um, what happens is, is it sends a test pulse into the battery to see what kind of resistance it offers. And it uses that measurement to come up with a cold crank number. So the testing threshold is 145. And when I press this enter button, it will send that little shock wave down in there. It'll poke the battery and the battery will spit back out the number of cold crank amps that it produces. Here we go. So there it is. 13.9 volts, 
This battery says, or this tester says that the battery is okay, there it is, and it's making 142 cold crank amps. So we're gonna lower the bar, it's 142. So we're gonna lower the bar, 145, okay, 140. So there's the next step down. So we'll do again, testing, 142. Okay, that's a good number. It's not impressive, but it's, it's a good number considering how old this battery potentially is. And we suspect that this battery is probably, well, I don't know, um, what did you say, 2016? It's 2023 now, so it's not that new. <clears throat> All right. The next test, uh, this is called a multimeter. Maybe you've seen one of these before. Maybe you even have one. We're going to turn this on by pressing the on button. Some numbers are going to appear here, and I'm going to put the same colored probes corresponding to the battery. So the red one's going to go on the positive side of the battery, and the negative one is going to go on the side of the negative battery. And 13.9, that's exactly what the, um, ah, what the load tester showed. And that's great, 13.9. So now I'm gonna hold these as carefully as I can. And off camera, you can't see this, but you'll be able to hear it. I'm gonna go turn the key on the bike and start the bike. And we're gonna see just how low this number dips. Now, we should see a dip when we start it. When we turn the key on, the headlight is on, the taillight is on, and the battery voltage will start to drop immediately. We should start the bike as quickly as possible in that process. And actually, before I do that, let me just tie off the clutch handle so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't um, give us too much trouble. Sorry, you can't see this right now. I'm off camera. I'm just putting a, um, a zip tie around your clutch lever so that the bike thinks that it's safe to start because it is. Okay, here I am back. Put the red lead on the red. Put the black lead on the black, 13.9, that's what we saw before. With this hand, I'm going to go start the bike, turn the key, we'll see an immediate drop, and start the bike. Did you see that? Did you see that? It dropped to like 10. There's 12.3, dropping, dropping, 3, 2. That's actually not bad, 10 volts. I saw a 9 there but I've also tried poking the starter button like three or four times here. So um, I'm not seeing a very impressive amperage coming out of the battery at 10 or so is about the threshold where I say this battery is no good. It's teetering on fine, functional. It's doing what it's supposed to. But uh, how quickly does this battery recover back to 13.9 now that I've poked it three times? Let's just quickly check this. 12.93. We're just going to wait to see if it comes back 9.4. And it should. It come, should come all the way back very slowly. It should come back to its original resting point. And we could, all pun intended, jumpstart this number by starting the bike and allowing the engine to charge the battery to bring this number up to a higher level so that it actually comes back to the 13.9 number that we had before. So it seems we stopped at 9.4. It'll probably click over to 9.5. But we don't have time for that in this video. So we're going to start the bike again. That was 8.45 there. And there's that duck, duck, duck thing you were talking about. This is the battery at its just teetering limit of a failure, obviously, to start the bike. Let's uh, turn that off. Let's try again. 13.6, 14 volts, 14.10, 13.9. It's going to give it a little bit of throttle here. Bike makes great voltage. Shut it off, turn off the key. 13, 3, 2, 0, 29, 27. It'll come down, probably stop around 13.9. Okay. Okay, Winnie, I'm going to say now that we've replaced the um, now that we've replaced the LED light on the tail light, uh, I'm going to say that changing this battery may be a remedy to start the, um, to get the bike to start more reliably. The battery's got a few years on it. It is good. It, it totally works. Will it leave you in the lurch? I can't guarantee it, but I'm more inclined to guarantee the bike not leaving you in the lurch with a new battery than with this existing battery, which is several years old. There's the video.